What you're about to see in here is the Rivera Knucklehead Tray, the 55 watt model, a newer model, uh, and the Rock Crusher Recording Direct, and we're using basic metal hard rock type riffs just to show how much power you have on tone shaping uh, with this 11 band EQ. So you've seen some other videos where you, you know, with this particular graph shape or that graph shape, you get this speaker because we graph speakers and then give you that shape. Um, but this is also just to show you how to shape your own tone to have even a better tone. Maybe you don't want a vintage 30 tone. Maybe you want to create your own big brutal tone and uh, the plus or minus 18 dB on this active 11 band EQ gives you massive range to really dial in what you want. 75 hertz through 4K is basically all is the key frequencies in the guitar speaker frequency range. There's very few guitar speakers that do below 75 hertz that sound good and uh, that do above 4K and especially 5K. But at 4K, you start the speakers start rolling off tremendously. It's almost like a total cliff. And when you see the dips and peaks of what makes a great guitar speaker, it's usually these frequencies, the 125, 175 for the low end, all the 500, the 1.2K, 1.6, etc. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna loop a basic chunk riff and it's fairly flat here and you're just gonna hear the K tray dialing in in a you know standard kind of tone with a little bit of uh, good distortion and bottom end. So here we go. So you're about to hear this right now. Let's bring up our level. All right, so you can see here, you know, we can dial in some gain. Massive gain, or let's just back it off. All right, that's starting to sound nice and chunky and tight. A little mid-range, a little scoop. Let's put it about three, have our top end. It's a little brown, uh, seven. Here we go, seven. Base is about seven. All right, so now let's start tone shaping. Okay, so here we go. So we're at a flat. So you saw what the amp settings were. So now we're at a flat tone. But let's start tone shaping. So you know, I'm going to scoop the mids, get a little even more chunky metal tone, and add some highs. add some bottom and what's awesome about this is you can have some great bottom end at 175 and 250 add a little 125 but keep it tight by bringing down the 75 hertz see how you have a big bottom end and nice and tight now if you want to bring that 4x12 kind of woof that 75 hertz would do it so you're just bringing some 4x12 woof which sounds brutal. So let's tighten that bottom end again by bringing the 75 hertz down, maybe the 125, but keeping the 175 and 250 high. All right, so let's say we want to even scoop it even more. Brought down to 750, the 500, and the 375. Let's lower the 250 just a tad. Maybe increase the 125. So that's a more exaggerated scoop. So you can see how much tremendous power you have on really shaping your tone. Well, let's bring it back flat again. And then just start tone shaping using your ear of like, okay, just start experimenting with the 1.6. Here's the massive range. Here's the 1.2. Here's the 75. And oh, you know what? I like kind of upper mids. Let's get rid of some of that 375. Let's add a little 125 for the bottom. And 175. And then, you know, let's just take off some of that top end. Ah, it's a little too dark for me, but I, that upper, upper top, I want to keep it down, but maybe I'll increase that. So I got my 2.5K that brings some clarity. See, and that's just your shape. This is your custom shape. Nobody else can have this unless you have the exact amp, exact settings, exact guitar. 
double that with a different graph shape when you're walking. So you can see how, once again, how much control you really have. Let's add that 4x12 wolf again. Of course, the lower the tuning of the guitar, the more you're going to hear that. Now, this is just standard drop D. Alright, so let's bring it back to the middle again. Anyways, you can understand that. So look, we're going to change the riff a little bit, more of like a kind of a faster, uh, a faster, chunky riff. Okay, so what you're about to hear now is the rock rack and the K-Tray with a basic metal riff, another basic metal riff, uh, a little bit of a faster palm muta type playing, looped, and we're gonna start off with the Celestian Creamback shape. And this, we graphed a Creamback with a 57 on the edge of the dust cap. So you can hear this, here we go. Okay, so great tone, Creamback shape sounds fantastic. That's a, very, that's a super fantastic speaker. But let's say, all right, you know what? I want to take this shape now modified. I want to add a little more highs. Very intuitive. Every little change and every little move you can clearly hear. You're like, oh no, let's back that off. But like, you know, I, would want, I want a little more mid-range. All right, why don't we do that? Let's not make it quite as scooped. Uh, that sits in the mix well. Okay, that sounds meaty. Alright, so then maybe for my overdub, I'll go back to the original Greenback shape. Or, you know, I do love the Chunky Wolfie cabinet again. Bring that 75 up. And here we go. Let's say, I want to completely start all over. Of course, you can go back to flat, but I highly recommend maybe trying one of the speaker shapes and then modify it from there. So you can actually sound better than the speakers out there with the rockers recording. It captures the tone of the power tubes and the feel is there, which is extremely important. The dynamics of your playing is there. Let's just make it really nice and tight. Nah, I don't like that tone. Okay, I want to lower the bottom end and really make it tight. Make the tone a little tinier. Scoop it out again. Pretty beefy, meaty, much tighter, like ultra tight. That's a little more black metal there. Kind of a narrow mid-range. A lot of distortion, super scooped. Here we go, change the EQ in the amp now. Because now, don't forget, you got EQ on the amplifier you're using as well. All right, so let's go back to flat. And then, let me use my, the EQ of my amp again. Okay, so now you have a great idea of how much tone shaping is possible with the Rock Crusher recording. I mean, it is truly endless, and yet it stays in the guitar speaker frequency range, which is the guitar range, electric guitar. And these, especially the 75 through the 375, having this amount of EQ, these bands and the plus or minus 18, DB really allows you to fine tune your bottom end. And that's really important, especially when you're playing eight string guitars or seven string guitars and you're in drop B or drop A or G sometimes. That is really tricky to have a great big chunky tone, but not too flubby and make sure it sits in the mix well. And again, this is doing it all analog. You know, there's no digitizing here. This is you know, there's no latency, there's no shrinking of the dynamic range, there's just big analog tube tone with a real amp uh, and a real reactive load. Okay, thanks for watching.